The minister responsible for keeping cyclists safe came face to face with some of the hazards on London's roads for himself today. Robert Goodwill pedalled his way from King's Cross to Lambeth, admitting parts of the route were confusing. Well, tonight, the debate over safety is stepping up another gear, as you can see on your screens. This is a live shot of hundreds of people who've joined a protest in central London aimed at bringing an end to the rise of number of deaths on London streets. Now, we will be live with our, with our reporter, Ruth Banks, in just just a moment, but here she is now looking back at the story. If you're one of London's avid cyclists, you'll know every inch of your route to work, the bits where you feel safe and the junctions that make you scared. Today, the cycling minister tried to make your commute his own with a two-hour tour of the capital cycle routes. Well, it was quite an eye-opener. I mean, I do cycle in every morning, but it's uh, just down the riverside from Pimlico on the cycle superhighway number eight. So this was sort of showing me the very best and sadly the very worst of uh, the cycling environment here in London. Royal College Street in Camden was fantastic. They've got uh, light seg segregation and what people sometimes call armadillos in the road, bolted to the road to show where the cycle lane is. Uh, so that not so good, some quite good bits, but other bits were completely confusing. We went down a street that was meant to be for cyclists, but we were supposed to sort of mount the, the pavement onto a cycling. Bike safety has rocketed up the political agenda following a recent spate of fatal accidents. 14 cyclists have been killed on London's roads this year. And in response, the Met Police launched a special operation to improve road safety on Monday, targeting anyone, cyclists or motorists, who were potentially putting lives at risk. In the first three days, they handed out 1,392 fines to car and lorry drivers. 755 were handed to cyclists and five driving-related arrests were made. But many cyclists still don't feel that enough is being done. Went, I think both wheels of the lorry went directly over the two sides of the bike. Isabel Farkey is lucky it was just her bike that failed to survive a crash with a lorry in Old Street yesterday. She doesn't think that cyclists should be sharing the roads with HGVs at all. I'd like to see some kind of regulation like they do in Paris where lorries huge HGVs aren't allowed to drive in central London during the day or where they have to have sen sensors all the way around or maybe the cycle lanes that are properly demarcated with like concrete boundaries. It shouldn't be a question of commuting cyclists sharing the road with huge, huge lorries who just have massive blind spots. Transport for London is spending nearly £1 billion on better cycle lanes. The question is, will that be enough? Well, as I mentioned earlier, there is a massive protest going on with hundreds of cyclists in central London at the moment. Ruth Banks is with them now. So what is it that they're hoping to achieve, Ruth? Well, the protesters here tonight say that they want to see an end to deaths and serious injuries on our roads. Even today, a woman in her 40s was taken to hospital after a collision with a lorry on Kensington High Road. Well, joining me now is Tom Carney, a road safety campaigner. Tom, Transport for London are spending a billion pounds on improving cycle safety. They're introducing more segregated cycle lanes and remodelling dozens of junctions. They say they're listening. Why do you need an event like this? Um, well, I mean, obviously the spate of deaths of pedestrians and cyclists, certainly in the last three weeks, just goes to show you that the roads are not safe for vulnerable road users. That's why we need this. They say it takes time, though. They're working flat out to deliver the sort of changes that cyclists have been demanding. Don't you need to give them a bit of time? Uh, absolutely not. I mean, the issue now is that half, half measures don't count. Do you realize this year there were 83% increase in fatalities from buses, TfL's buses, and the managers of TfL gave themselves the largest bonuses ever. You shouldn't be getting bonuses if more people are dying. Well, the managers of TfL aren't here uh, at the moment to, to respond to, 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 to that, but they are bringing in a safety lorry charge uh, for HGVs which don't have safety uh, equipment and uh, an HGV task force of police that they're funding. Managers of TfL don't even keep records or have any information about how many of their own bus drivers have been convicted or prosecuted for dangerous driving. There's lots that TfL could be doing, it's not. There have been a lot of protests like this in the past. Do, do, what are you trying to achieve here? Um, well, it's quite simple to alert people. The number of people lying in there was less than the number of people since Boris Johnson has been mayor who have been killed or seriously injured in 
collisions with TFL buses. That's a huge number of people out there. And guess what? It's less than the number of people that have been killed and seriously injured by TFL's buses. Tom, Tom thank you. Um, well, there have been 14 deaths so far this year on London's roads. That's the same as for the whole of 2013. There is one thing that Transport for London and the protesters agree on, and that is they don't want to see any more 